Hey guys, welcome back to my studio. It's been quite some time since I did a tutorial video, but I promise if my last one did reasonably well that I'd do another one. So here I am. All right, let's get down to it. How to paint realistic grass. Grass is a very fundamental aspect of most landscape paintings, but it's quite a complex subject to paint. Grassy areas are rarely the primary focus of my compositions, and yet this background feature can make or break your painting. In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint one specific type of grass that I tend to use often. The goal of painting this type of grass is to convey a sense of depth to a composition and provide a good anchor for the subject matter to feel like it fits well into the environment. Here are some examples of the grass I'm talking about. There's clearly a wide variety of grasses in these paintings, and they express very different emotions to the viewer. But I use the same technique for all of these paintings. With this technique, I'm able to establish my grass layer very quickly and to a good level of detail. If you have any questions that I failed to cover in this video, please comment below and I'll be happy to reply. All right, let's discuss this process by analyzing my most recent painting. As in past tutorial videos, I will show the entire process for this painting as we go along to give you an idea of when the various stages were painted during the process. I always start with an acrylic block in for all of my paintings. I never paint from a single reference image anymore, and for grass specifically, I don't use a reference image at all. So because I can't simply copy colors and values as I see them in my references, I use this blocking phase to play with my colors and values to get a better understanding of my color objectives for this particular painting. As you can see here, the grass block-in is usually just a simple wash of color. In this case, I'm playing a bit with the depth values as well. I use an oval mop brush during this phase. It can get a lot of paint down quickly, and it's also a good reminder to not focus on details, just the large areas for color purposes. Okay, now it's time to get some oil on the canvas. The first step to this process is to get a good layer of shadow color down. Even though this shadow color will be primarily covered by future layers, it's still very important to make sure the texture feels at least somewhat like grass. Make sure that your strokes are vertical, close to the length of the grass blades, and sufficiently random. Once you have a good base shadow color layer down, it's time to put in the grass itself.
The most important elements to this technique that allow me to get a large amount of real estate grass painted in a very short amount of time are the brush and brush strokes I use. First, let's discuss the brush. For this painting, I used a one inch Wooster chip brush because this painting is on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. For larger paintings, I use the two inch version to get more grass done faster. Take a look at this brush. The tip is full of chaotic little bristles at various angles and lengths. This makes it perfect for painting a large number of individual grass blades with every stroke. Let's compare this brush with some other options I've tried in the past. A fan brush, a filbert grainer brush, and a wisp flat brush. Notice that with all these other brushes, you'll be able to paint multiple grass blades with a single stroke, but to varying degrees. In each case, every stroke will give you very uniform blade, all the same length and blade direction. With additional strokes and layers, you can start to get the level of randomness you need, but it takes a lot more time, energy, and thought to do it. Even with this magic brush, it's extremely important to get the brush strokes right. Be very careful to make the brush strokes of proper length for the specific depth layer you're working on, slowly increasing the length as you move down the canvas. Use a very light touch, just kissing the canvas with the tip of the brush. If you apply too much pressure, you'll just get mud, not nice individual blades. It's also very important to thin your paint a bit to ensure your brush's hairs don't clump together. This isn't as easy as it looks on the video, so make sure to take the time to practice your strokes with various paint consistencies to get a feel for what will work best for you. For this painting, I used a combination of yellow ochre and sap green paints. For the most part, I just used the color straight out of the tube with no mixing. I allow the colors to mix a bit by applying wet on wet directly on the canvas to get some added color variation, but be very careful not to blend too much, or again, you'll just end up with mud. Notice also that I have not altered my colors in any way based on distance from the view plane. It certainly doesn't hurt to do that, but it isn't necessary. You can always correct color for depth at a later stage, as will be shown later in this video. Okay, after the grass layer dries, I correct for color depth. I also added a bit of foggy effect, as is common on autumn mornings. To do this, just requires a simple glaze of straight titanium white paint, ensuring more transparency as you go down the canvas. This last stage is more traditional and takes the longest amount of time, but it is necessary if your grass comes right up to the viewing plane. It is especially necessary if you have a close subject that needs anchoring into your scene, as with the mums in this painting. Unfortunately, it is as tedious as it looks, painting multiple layers of grasses, including shadow, one blade at a time. 
but this stage is only needed for the grass that is really close to the viewing plane. For this stage, I used a dagger striper brush, but I've also used round brushes in the past. With the dagger striper, you don't have to fight with constantly flattening your brush hairs, but it does tend to make the grass blades straighter. This is fine for painting manicured grass like in this farmyard, but if you're painting a more rural landscape, you might want to opt for the round brush. And that's it. The total time for me to paint this grass on this 16 by 20 inch canvas was under an hour. And 39 minutes of that was the final stage. Hopefully this video has inspired you in some way and given you confidence to try and tackle painting all that grass in your next painting. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this content and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe.